All right, guys. So today we have Jeremy and Orr from Similar Web, and we're going to be taking a look at digital trends that investors can be paying attention to in 2024. So really excited to get into this as we kick off the new year. Uh, Jeremy and Orr, thank you guys both so much for being here with me today and taking the time to chat. Thank you so much. So I'm all. I'm the CEO of uh, Similar Web, and Jeremy is our lead uh, insight uh, um, person that's based in New York that work with the investor community. So he's the one crunching our data day and night to look and find out what is the next big thing happening in the investment world. Yeah, so he is looking forward to share with you some nice insight. Yes, and, fantastic. And Jeremy, I was going to ask if we could give a big background there on exactly what Similar Web is and how it gives you guys access to these unique insights. Yeah, and look, I um, similar to me, it's uh, it's like being a meteorologist who can look at uh, disruptive patterns all around the world at any point in time, and, and that's just for for my purpose, it's just an incredible way to unpack trends in real time. Um, so I've, I'm part of the research team. I've been running it for about four years now at Simple Web, and, and we service investors. And you know, we have uh, hundreds of bi billion websites that we're tracking, millions of apps that we have on a daily basis. Um, and a collection of data that that enables us to unlock all these unique pieces of information from SaaS user seats to travel to the impact of AI. Um, and so the the insights that we bring today are sort of a collection of all of those uh, trends in one. And we're, we're kind of parsing out the most important uh, pieces of that. Right. So and I can kick off with just some of the most important things that we're seeing and uh, there's probably no cleaner barometer if you're looking at a company like Booking or Airbnb or Expedia. There's there's no cleaner barometer on the health of the global consumer than travel and entertainment. And so we are aggregating 600 of the largest platforms into an index. And what we're seeing is ongoing pressure. Uh, it's occurring in nearly every region. And the most impacted that we're seeing are resorts and destinations and entertainment. So you know, within a sector that's that's largely discretionary as a whole, we're seeing the most acute pressure in the most discretionary of those categories. So um, really what? tells you that that consumers are saving, they're preparing for a tough, tougher period, and then conversion rates are down across the board. So it's an interesting category to be seeing that downward pressure, because I feel like, you know, coming out of post pandemic, we did see a lot of pent up travel demand trend positively, but now maybe with all those inflationary concerns, we're seeing it kind of come back the other way. Yeah, exactly. And I think this is just a universal trend that we're seeing across the space travels where it's the most acute. We did actually have an uptick uh, earlier in the year. So there was some hope that uh, things may have been recovering, but that has since uh, ceased. And I think part of that is just the, the, the accumulated impact of inflation on, uh, on that trend. Uh, our second trend, and I mentioned something about the SAAS spend. Yeah, so SAS has been, um, we, we track unique activity on roughly a million, half a million uh, enterprise accounts. So if you, you think about what we're on today, we're on similarweb.zoom.us. That gives it unique insights on us as a customer of Zoom. Um, we can do that for nearly every Zoom customer on the enterprise level. And what we have is a lot of the impact of the budget cuts, which really started in earnest about two years ago, ramped up last year, and they're continuing to take their toll on, on growth. So um, while the market has punished uh, more of the SMB-oriented SaaS names like a, like a HubSpot or a, a Fresh, what we're actually seeing is more pressure coming from the larger enterprise accounts. So um, this is really driven by C contraction. So some of the uh, most negative impacts on uh, Adobe or um, a CRM, those are starting to flow through and we're, we're continuing to see large enterprise pull back on, uh, on their budgets for SaaS this year. Okay, so for those big ones, we're seeing a negative impact, but the smaller to medium-sized businesses, is it a positive trend or just kind of neutral? It's it's neutral and, and stabilizing, which is actually surprising, um, okay. given that this is a tougher environment for for startups, tougher environment for SMBs. Um, yeah. But from the perspective of uh, spend on platforms, it's actually stabilizing. I think it's just been we've had many many years or three years now uh, of contracted budgets on the SMB side, and maybe we're starting to hit the bottom. Moving on to our third trend, what do you have for us? 
Yeah, this is a uh, for Shopify, Amazon, uh, big commerce, and others. Uh, one of the structural trends that we've seen in the last five years has been this surge in D 2 C e commerce, and it's really been powered by you know, first the pandemic helped to to egg that along, but um, just the in investment in infrastructure and fulfillment from Shopify and others have really helped to drive that. Um, those trends have started to reverse course. You know, Shop has had some trouble with getting fulfillment up and running. Um, the D 2 C growth premium to marketplaces, so the Amazons of the world, is effectively gone, uh, and we think this is price driven. So marketplaces are often cost leaders in a category. Uh, if consumers are feeling that inflationary pressure, the cost leaders will start to outperform uh, the D 2 C. Exactly, and that D 2 C being like the direct consumer, so the uh, those individual shops reaching out to the people is being overwhelmed by by Amazon, right? So we have. Amazon being the behemoth where everyone's now going to get the best price and yeah, kind of edging out. Exactly. And it, it's really where you start your search. If you're looking for bed sheets, if you're starting um, on Amazon, if you're starting somewhere else, you might have a different experience and a different cost or initial price point. And we're seeing that the marketplaces are attracting more customers because of that flight to cost or flight to cost leadership, knowing that you're going to probably get the best deals or at least the best starting deals in a marketplace environment versus going on individual brands. Uh, okay, moving on. I think we had another one regarding AI you mentioned at the start too. Now that is a trend that we've seen dominate the market this past year. It seems any company that had some mention of AI in their pipeline was seeing tremendous growth and excitement, but how are you guys seeing the trends reflect on your end? Yeah, and it's been fun to keep track with all the new platforms that have have popped up. We've been monitoring not just the growth in these AI platforms, uh, but I think what's what's really um, in the mind of investors is what's likely to be most impacted. And uh, we've been tracking that web builders and design platforms have been a source of weakness. Um, now, this impact has been compounded by a software backdrop. Um, but if you're building a website or you're designing you know, an app for the first time today, the avenues in which you're going to pursue are vastly different than what they were even a year ago. So the amount of tools that it would take just to get that basic development design are staggering. So on the whole, there's been a pretty significant slowdown on the web builder side. We've seen uh, you know pullbacks in Wix uh, and Gold GoDaddy, even Shopify. You consider that to be a, a web builder uh, and shop builder um, on design like Figma. Um, in limbo for a year on the Adobe takeover has been has been a challenge. You even saw over the weekend that Envision, which was once valued at two billion dollars, shut down. Um, it's just the evident that the speed of which we're seeing AI affect markets is in a weakened state is likely to speed up. So the the impact here is that the weak likely get weaker in 2024. Sure, and it's interesting because I think with AI, a lot of people are focusing on on the positive side, the strength of it, and the companies that's going to benefit. But on mm -hmm. the flip side, there are a lot that it is, as you mentioned, weakening, where it's actually taking away uh, some of the need for their their um, services there. So that's interesting to hear the the opposite side, the the downside of AI when it comes to impacting stocks. Any other trends we want to go through? Well, look, I think since the since ChatGPT and uh, had their dev day, or when they had their dev day, um, we've actually seen consolidation in general. So there was this uh, proliferation of all these different apps that popped up doing different things using <clears throat> OpenAI as the as the backdrop. And now with the dev day, which launched all these new applications that do those uh, certain specific things, we've seen consolidation towards general. So. Um, open AI behemoth, similar to the Amazon behemoth, just gets stronger and stronger. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, thank you guys so much for going through those top trends there, uh, giving the investors some different areas to look at with maybe a bit of a different lens than we typically see. So we really appreciate that unique insight.